Hi, and thanks for tuning in. This is another edition of Bobby's Video Cast. I'm Bobby Chu, and uh, thanks for tuning in. You know, a lot has happened over the last few months, and I'll be telling you about it slowly and surely, but uh, today is a special day. Today is my birthday. So, right now I'm up in my studio, got up uh, 8 o'clock today, and I just want to just take a little time to myself and just think about where I've been, what I've done, uh, what do I want to do, and really just be thankful for everything that's happened to me, good or bad. Today I want to take some time out and do something that I've done in a past podcast but because so many people have been emailing me about it and wanting me to do this again um, now if you're driving or if you're very prone to hypnosis I don't want you to do this at all okay this is it's not meant for hypnosis it's really just meant for motivating yourself to work harder and to just be the person that you want to be. Now what I suggest is that you listen to this one time and just listen to it. You don't need the full concentration or anything and just hear what it's all about. Then go back and do it again, this time concentrating absolutely fully on exactly what I'm saying. Now what I want you to do is to close your eyes and think back to the times throughout the year or throughout your life where you're doing something that you didn't want to do. Bad habits, bad workplace, whatever it is. Okay, I want you to think about that. Whether it's smoking too much, whether it's drinking too much, whether it's playing video games too much, whether it's sitting at your desk and not doing any work, just chatting with your friends beside you. I want you to think about that. Picture it in your mind. You're there right now. Now what I want you to do is you're going to step out of your body. Imagine yourself there and then imagine yourself stepping out of your body so that you're looking at yourself the back of your head as you take three steps back observe yourself look at that person and all the things that you don't like about that person all the bad habits that that person has okay now take three more steps back as you step back what's happening to the image is that starting to turn from colored to black and white everything starting to flatten out like as if it was a picture this is a nice big picture of a snapshot of your life the parts of your life that you don't like about yourself now take three more steps back you're getting further and further that picture is shrinking and shrinking and keep walking backwards until that image is now a 6 by 8 painting. It's turned from a solid image and it's starting to morph into painting. Now that's black and white and now that you see it as a painting you have disconnected yourself from that person that you see that is the old you. Now let's hang that up on the wall nice and far and we're observing it from nice and far away. That is the old you. Now what I want you to do is turn around and imagine yourself turning around. When you turn around you all of a sudden start walking forward into the darkness it's darkness all around but as you start walking forward you start to see some light and light gets bigger and bigger 
as you start walking more and more towards it. Imagine yourself taking every step. Imagine yourself walking through this dark tunnel towards the light. As you get closer and closer, what's happening is you're starting to see an image appear all around you now. The lights are turning on. And now you're back to when you were five or six years old, whenever you first started to love art. That's where you've been taken back to. When you were doing art, not for art assignments, not for your job, but for yourself. You're a little child now. And you're just enjoying art. You're enjoying learning. Imagine yourself there. What are you wearing? What are the colors all around you? What are you painting with? What are you coloring with? Is it crayons? Are they paints? Smell the smells around you. It might be the crayons. It might be your mom's cooking in the background. Smell the smells around you. See the colors around you. Picture yourself sitting right there. You are that child again. You are doing art for yourself. You're doing art because you love doing art. You love to learn about art. You love doing it. You're in an extremely happy place. Now what I want you to do is listen to the paper as you start drawing on it. Listen to all the sounds that are around you at this time. You're listening, you're seeing, you're hearing, you're there. Now what I want you to do is you're going to take a step back out of your body. And when you do that, you're going to see yourself as a child sitting right there in front of you. So on the count of three, we're going to take a nice step back. And you want to imagine this. So one, two, three, take a nice big step back. And now you're imagining, you're envisioning yourself as a child right there before you, right before your feet, having fun, just doing art. Now, what I want you to do is slowly raise your head up. And as you start raising your head up, a golden hula hoop is going to come from the sky. It's going to come into your hands. And you're going to slowly, gently place that hula hoop around the child version of you. As you do this, as you start lowering it down, what's happening to the child is starting to be absorbed into that hula hoop. And as everything starts to be absorbed by the hula hoop, the hula hoop starts to glow with energy. Now slowly, slowly bring it down until it's down onto the ground. And when that happens, everything starts to be absorbed by that hula hoop and all of a sudden there's nothing left except for that hula hoop. Now what I want you to do is shrink that hula hoop with your mind. Visualize it shrinking in your mind and as it shrinks it starts to glow bigger, brighter, even more intense as it starts to glow all around you. You could feel the energy, the heat on your skin. You can feel it all in the front of you. You can see the light glowing all over you. It's this beautiful warm glow. And as the hula hoop starts to shrink more and more, it eventually shrinks into a little golden ball with the intense energy of the sun. And what that energy feels like is it's warm and glowing and it contains all the love that you have for art as a child. Now what I want you to do with that 
is pick it up. Okay, I want you to pick it up and I want you to put it in your pocket. Okay, you can feel the warmth in your pocket. Now what I want you to do is stand up straight. I want you to visualize yourself turning around. And when you turn around, what's going to happen is you're going to start to hear these footsteps coming in out of the darkness. They're friendly footsteps. It's yourself. As you start to come more and more into the light, you can see yourself walking towards you. This is yourself from the future. Exactly how you want to be. Exactly where you want to be. This is the successful version of yourself. I want you to look at that person. Think about their hair. What does their hair look like? Think about what that person is wearing. That version of yourself. The successful version of yourself. What is he wearing or she wearing? What do they smell like? How do they sound when they start talking? Are they confident? Are they shy? What are they doing? Now this is the ultimate successful version of yourself walked up straight in front of you. Now imagine that the person is literally one foot away from you. Very friendly, very happy. Now what I want you to do is, now that you imagine him or her right in front of you, I want you to turn around so you're back facing the person. And that version of you has put their hands on your shoulders. You can feel the same warmth, the same love that you feel in that little ball in your pocket that's heating up. And what you're going to do is on the count of three, you're going to step back into that person. I want you to visualize this. One, two, three. Now that you step back into that person, as you're stepping back in, you're now looking through that person's eyes. You're thinking like that person would think. How would that be different from how you think right now? Think about all the bad habits that this person might have, all the good habits that this person does have. All the struggles, everything that that person needed to do to get to where they are right now. Now you know what you have to do. You know that you can get there and you want to become this person. This bigger, better version of yourself, more efficient, more successful, just an amazing love of life. Now what I want you to do is feel that ball in your pocket starting to heat up again. Visualize it. Feel it. Now reach into your pocket and pull it out. It's nice and soft. And it smells great. Warm soft, smells like bread. Now put it in your mouth. It's glowing intensely. As you bite into it, you start to feel all that energy, all that love for when you were a child, when you were just a child artist and you were doing art for the sake of art, that's going to spread throughout your mouth. It's going to make your mouth glow. It's going to be nice and warm as it trickles and spreads throughout your body, over your forehead. Imagine it going down your neck, throughout your arms, into your heart, into your legs, into your stomach. You feel this immense, beautiful, lovely feeling of sunshine. You're emanating that. Now that you know what you need to do to get to where you want to go, now that you've taken that love 
of doing art for the sake of art, doing art for the sake of learning, and you've absorbed that, now what I want you to do is slowly walk straight ahead of you. Now, as you're walking straight ahead of you, you're starting to feel like the ground is pushing you ahead as well. It's pushing you towards light. And when you get to that light, on the count of three, you're going to open up your eyes and feel refreshed, feel driven to do amazing things, to be that person that you were visualizing, that successful version of you. So on the count of three, we're all going to open up our eyes. One, two, three. And now you know what you need to do. You know what you need to change in your life to get you to where you want to go. And there's no reason to slow down from this point. You need to go 100%. Just steamroll through everything. Take every day exactly how that successful version of you would do it. Be that person first. Don't wait for everything around you to make you into that person. I guarantee you, if you are thinking like that successful person, if you are doing things like that successful version of yourself, you're going to become that successful version of yourself. What kind of bad habits does that person have? Probably not very many at all. You know, what does that person, what kind of habits does that person have? Does he wake up early? Does he or she, you know, not waste time and is very effective and organizing and all that stuff? Think about this every day and think about what that successful version of yourself would do. How would they act? How would they speak? And do it. That way you will become that person. Now, on a side note, I've been meaning to talk about this for a little while now. On a side note, for the people that have been around and been listening to these podcasts from the very beginning, one of the very first podcasts I did was answering an email from a person from F South Florida. And this person was a conceptual artist working for a small company in Florida he wrote to me telling me that he was the exact same person that I was talking about in the podcast previous he was stuck at a job that was a crappy art job okay he was doing art that he didn't like to do and I always said that I would rather work at a retail store something that's completely not art related than to have a bad art job because after the day is done after I'm done doing my crappy job or the job that I did not want to do I will go home and do art like crazy if I'm at a bad art job I've been doing art all day asked to crank it out as fast as I can and it isn't about quality because if your quality is too high, it won't even match everybody else's stuff. But it was more about just producing. When that happened to me, it took away my love, my passion for doing art. Now, some people might be different. Okay, but if you find yourself in a situation where all of a sudden you're not doing art anymore for yourself, you know, you're not enjoying it, it's become just work to you and it's now no longer your hobby anymore you don't do it on your own this is what I'm talking about your job has started to take away your love of art now I know there's different situations for everybody and if you love your job that's completely great you know, because that's what life is about. It's about happiness. Anyways, what I was saying 
in that podcast really made sense to our our buddy in Florida. And he emailed me telling me this is exactly what he needed to hear. And now that he's heard it, he's going to start working towards his goals of being a professional concept artist from now on and not worrying about his bad job that he didn't like and he quit now this got me a little nervous but I definitely I saw his portfolio and I definitely saw a lot of professional skill in there so I I encouraged him on this okay which is a little scary because in order for this to work you have to put your heart and your soul into it you cannot wait to somehow become obsessed about art you have to force yourself you have to make yourself try to make yourself love art love to do it thank goodness he did this okay he busted his butt and quit his job and started working like crazy because I got another updated email which almost brought tears to my eyes it just gave me that warm fuzzy feeling inside like I just couldn't believe it I he just made me so proud he emailed me in 2006 and in July he emailed me again he emailed me and told me that he's the guy that quit the horrible art job to start drawing every day and doing pretty much everything that I was instructing him to do except you know 20 times over just became obsessed with it and that's exactly what I'm talking about he started doing freelance work for small companies you know stored up some money to live off of and started to do just small little game company works but the thing was even though these were small jobs he took it with passion these were jobs that he wanted to do and he gave those people much more than they paid for so much better quality than they paid for and that led to more jobs and from these he started to just study and paint whenever he could for about at least 10 hours a day from there everything started snowballing he would get more jobs he started changing his whole portfolio and when he emailed me back in July I couldn't have been happier the title said hey I think I did it and as I was reading this this email he said he's this close to achieving a major goal in his life a goal that he lost doing that art job that he did not want to do now that he's driven he only takes jobs that gear him towards his goal and when he doesn't have any jobs he's still working he's still producing those are the times when you can update your portfolio put in pieces from the kind of work that you want to do because when he emailed me back in July I looked him back up I went to his website and I was absolutely blown away in eight months time or whatever it was he had transformed his whole entire portfolio into something completely new now it's geared towards video games the types of video games that he wanted to do all his life and it's very obvious when you go to his website you know exactly what this person is all about you know exactly what they want to do even more impressive if you followed along already if you already knew him and you were following al along on his website you would have noticed that he did a complete 360 turnaround in a matter of eight months produced so much stuff that everything's 
I think only one thing on his whole site now was from before listening to the video cast and changing his life. Only one. Now I'm going to mention his name this time because I wish him all the best and I believe that he can do it. This person's name is Cole Eastburn, an amazing artist and these are the type of people that studios want to hire. People with such amazing passion. It doesn't really matter that much about your skill level. You know, if you take two people with just about the same skill level, one is slightly better than the other, but the one that's slightly better than the other is completely content with how they draw, how they paint. The other one that is slightly worse is driven, driven like crazy. You're obviously going to pick the person that's completely driven you know because these are the type of people that inspire others so I want you to go and check out eastburnart.com because this is a person that really knows what they want to do and is not going to stop for anybody until he gets there this is the same type of people that always succeed in life and these are the same type of people that I love to work with you know so I hope Cole I hope you don't mind me mentioning your name this time it's only because I absolutely believe in you and you know you have made me just so happy and so proud to see how far you've come in such a short amount of time you know these are the type of people that studios want to have take a look because before you know a year ago this person's stuff was completely different these are the kind of motivational people that we should take note of I've been meaning to say that for a long time now and I finally got around to it you know there's been a lot of things that have been happening in Imaginism Studios in my studio that have just been mind-blowing and crazy but I just can't talk about it until it slowly starts to happen one of the newest things is the fact that I'm going to be teaching at Seneca College now in Toronto Canada instead of in Oakville so anybody that's interested in taking live classes with me sign up has already started just look on the website imaginismstudios.com go to classes and you can download the registration form okay this is going to be an amazing class um, because I've now integrated the same things that I was teaching in Sheridan and some more in the advanced class and as well integrated the use of schoolism.com so now for the people in Toronto they can get live classes with me and then as well when they go home they can also keep reviewing and watching all the different videos on schoolism.com as well now there's only going to be 30 spots available so you know register right away because these spots tend to go quite quickly on another note comic con season is almost over it's been an amazing summer but thank goodness it's coming to end and it's ending with a bang back in my hometown of Toronto Canada the Fan Expo this is the last convention that I'm going to be doing for this year and if you haven't been there and you're in the area or even if you're outside of the area this is a convention that you must go to it's the I hear it's third largest in North America and it's gonna be insane especially because it's in my hometown of Toronto and you know I love Toronto so I have to give it some uh, hype but this year is a little bit more special because 
my friends from California. Uh, Steven Silver is going to be here. He's going to be signing books and you know talking with students and professionals, uh, whatever you want, about uh, his online classes on schoolism.com or just about art in general. You know, he's a great, great person that's completely, this person is self-taught and completely, absolutely inspirational. Not only that, but he was Character Artist of the Year in 2001, and so I'm going to try to get him to do some uh, characters for us at the convention as well. So, definitely come down if you have the time. Another great artist and friend of mine is David Coleman. He's going to be there at the Toronto Fan Expo and this person if you don't know who David Coleman is he is an amazing animal drawer amazing designer and right now he works for a Disney feature um, but he also just won an Emmy for his work at uh, the Cartoon Network so when you see him congratulate him on his Emmy you know, this is a person that works ex extremely hard as well and definitely deserves everything that all the successes that have come to him. So he's going to be there signing books and doing his thing. And right beside him is going to be Joe Weatherly, another amazing animal drawer, uh, amazing books, definitely worth checking out. They're all from California. And it's all their first time here being in Canada, being in Toronto anyways. And uh, so so for everybody around the area, around the Toronto area, come on in to the Fan Expo. It's going to be an amazing show. And uh, let's give these guys the proper big Canadian welcome. Okay? Now another person, great friend of ours at Imaginism Studios. Alberto Ruiz, just about the realest person in the biz, amazing artist, even though he won't admit it himself. Um, we've been great admirers of this guy for a long time, not just because of his art, but because of the type of person that he is. It's a person that lives for the independent artist and has been able to help numerous 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 amounts of artists published independently you know this person and we're all about independence here at Imaginism Studios so we love this guy to pieces alright so come on down and check out his stuff as well buy his books and get them signed and all that good stuff now, I haven't yet been able to do a review in my podcast about the San Diego Comic Con that just happened and went. It was an amazing, amazing time. If you've never been there before, that's literally, if you live anywhere in the world, you should still come to this convention because it's the biggest, baddest one in all of North America. And it was a mind-blowing time. Because so many of the friends and everybody that we only talk to through emails and things like that, through like on the phone, you know, this is the one time where we all get together and party it up like crazy, and you know, are able to hang out with each other again. So it's it's an amazing time where the whole entire city of San Diego is just ram packed with amazing artists. Like we were just having some drinks just down the street and a long walk Sergio Aragonas he has talks to us for 40 minutes and leaves and then along comes another artist, another group of artists. You know, it's just artists everywhere. It's so inspirational. It's just one of the best times of the year for me, definitely. Um, this year was very interesting because of many different things many 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 different events but there's one that I want to talk about it was an event that happened at the Comic-Con 
and I'm not going to mention any names. The whole point of me telling you this story is that there are some morals behind it. Okay, I'm talking to one of my guest artists for our next book called Dragon Sketches, and we're both excited, really excited about this book because there's going to be all these crazy artists in there. You know, it's going to be mostly K. Asadera and my stuff, but we always have a nice section in the back for even more uh, friends and artists that we greatly respect for them to showcase a little bit of their stuff as well, just to add some more styles into the book. Anyways, so I'm talking with this person about our exciting new book, Dragon Sketches, and all the different people that are going to be in there. Meanwhile, next to him is a person that I know, that I've known for a while. And this person asks, Hey, Bobby, how come you never asked me to be in your book? The funny thing was that I actually did ask this person to be in the book, to be a guest artist in the book, a long time ago. And at that time, I was just starting off. And what happened was that person completely snubbed me. So I told this person, actually, I did did ask you before but you completely snubbed me and walked away and was that person's response no no uh, I don't remember that I didn't do anything like that no I, I don't think that ever happened you know you never asked me and then I told the person I said no it was this year at this place and you're looking at my books and I really always liked your art. I still like you as a person now and you know and your art is amazing, but you did snub me. You know, I asked you to be in the book and you looked at me straight in the eye and you didn't say anything. You didn't say no, you didn't say yes and just put the book down and walked away. And then that person's response was no, no, no. I told you to email me, I gave you my email, and I asked you to email me about more information or whatever. And I, I told that person, well, no, I, I actually don't have your email. You never gave it to me. You just put down the book and you walked away. The only reason that I know this and you don't is most likely because it meant so much more to me than it did to you. I remember the friend that you were with and then I described the friend that they were with. Then I described the whole scenario, detail for detail. Why? Because it meant so much to me at that time. Especially because I respected that person's work so much. And because now that I'm a lot more successful than I was back then, this person, after I told this person this, they started to panic a little bit and started to say well like are you are you calling me out or something you know like what's going on why why are you why are you uh saying all this stuff to me and i told the person you know i like who you are i like you as a person i love your art i'm only telling you this because you asked why didn't I ever ask you to be a guest artist to be in in one of my books? That's the only reason. And I'm telling you why. <laughs> you know, a lot of it might have been because I wanted to make sure that this person knew that people remember, you know, things that are important to them. You know, that's why I always try to be very careful with what I say. You know, I know another friend of mine, a truly, truly successful comic book artist. And before he, he was successful, you know, he showed an editor his stuff, his portfolio. And that editor told him to give up drawing altogether. 
You can't say these kind of things, especially when people are respecting your work, whether you're the top student in the class or you're, you know, top illustrator, artist in, in the industry. Because when you say these things to people that look up to you, that really admire your stuff, that admire your work, they will remember exactly every single word that you just said and exactly how you said it. The time of day, the smell in the air, the colors around, the noises, everything. It will be burned <laughs> into their soul. And whether they forgive you or not, or whatever, they will always remember. So the next time you come across a person that is maybe not at the same level as you or does not have the same experience as you, you know, really be careful what you say. Because most likely, if you mean anything to them, they will remember. And a lot of times this comes back to me as well, you know, because I always try to consciously, I always try to talk to everybody the same way, whether they're a mega superstar or just an average student that wants to do good in the industry. I always try to treat everybody the same. And you don't know how many times people have come up to me and said, you know what, you made a difference in my life. And I'm so thankful for that. You know, it's not like I'm anything super special or anything. But if I could affect people in a positive way, that's the most rewarding thing in the world. Which is exactly why I do these podcasts. Is to hopefully take all the things that I've learned that have helped me uh, you know, become successful in what I do. Hopefully, others will be successful as well. And hopefully, I can affect others in a positive way. And I think that's about it. So, thank you very much for tuning in and listening. And uh, hope to see you at the Toronto Fan Expo this weekend, because it's going to rock. This is Bobby Chu signing off. If you want to see any of any more of my works... You know, please go to the website in the bottom right hand corner imaginismstudios.com or if you want to take online classes with me you can sign up at schoolism.com this is Bobby Chu signing off till next time <laughs>